All right, guys, welcome back to Fish the 406. My name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about bull trout and lake trout. One thing I was unaware is that lake trout are native to Montana. I thought they were just an introduced species, um, but apparently they're, they are native, and they're native to uh, Waterton Lake, Glen Lake, Causey Lake, St. Mary Lakes, just to name a few. And they're also, they're also native to According to this article I read, three alpine lakes located in the Beaverhead Range. And those lakes are Elk Lake, the Gravelies, I don't know if that's a lake or a place, and then also Twin Lakes. And apparently these lake trout have been there since the Ice Ages. So we knew like we know that this whole area was basically underwater at one point and as the water was receding, those fish got landlocked or got trapped in those lakes. Uh, since then. I don't know if those lake trout are still in there. It'd be really cool if someone has fished those lakes and can confirm it for me. So if you know, please let me know. That'd be really uh, neat to, to know. So basically what we're going to be talking about today is the introduction of non-native lake trout in Flyhead Lake and how that caused the population of cutthroat trout, bull trout mainly, uh, how those populations dwindled over time and what caused it, right? I think we all know kind of what caused it, but the, uh, the history of it and a little bit of the science about why it didn't work is pretty interesting. So let's talk about the lake trout a little bit. Lake trout love cold lakes. They love deep lakes. Flyhead Lake is wonderful. You know, Tally Lake is also a great lake. It's a very deep lake. Lake McDonald is another one. They love gravelly bottoms. Again, those lakes are perfect for them. That's where they kind of, uh, they spawn their eggs as well as in those gravelly pits. Same as the, I think, bull trout do the same thing. Uh, they like rocky bottoms. They spawn anywhere from October to November, anywhere from 10 to 120 feet in depth. So it varies by quite a bit. Eggs hatch anywhere from March to April. Uh, when the water temperatures are in 34 to 38 degrees Fahrenheit. The bull trout, not bull trout, lake trout live up to 30 to 40 years. That's quite a while and they can weigh up to 42 pounds. That's a big lake trout and that's, I think that's the record that holds right now in uh, Flyhead Lake or in Montana. So these are monster ferocious fish that will eat basically everything and anything that gets in its way so bull trout bull trout are they need the most perfect conditions to live so that is one reason why they're kind of dying not just because of lake trout but logging and all that other stuff that's been going on since we've stepped foot on this land essentially so bull trout need they need water that's in the temperature below 59 60 degrees if it hits that temperature they apparently just die they can't handle it it's too hot for them so they need the most pristine places Flyhead lake is great glacier park is a wonderful place for them lake mcdonald you have logging lake you have um, bowman lake quartz lake all those areas hold bull trout you have swan lake uh, there's a few lakes uh, alpine lakes that also hold native bull trout in them one of them being Big Salmon Lake. There's one more that I know of. There are probably a few more that I, I'm unaware of. But yeah, there's a few lakes that actually hold native bull trout in them as well. And then you have all the tributaries where they can uh, run up to and spawn as well. So, and they spawn anywhere from July to December, peak season, probably around September, just during the fall time when the weather kind of drops or the temperature drops. They will spawn anywhere, um, they will travel up to 160 miles. I don't know how they track this, but I'm assuming they did this with GPS, but they said that bull trout will go from Flyhead Lake and travel all the way to Canada uh, to spawn. It was quite a, quite a hike. Um, their eggs take anywhere from seven months uh, to hatch and again they have to be I would assume hatching in a peaceful environment because they don't like sediment so I don't know how the the young offspring or the fish or the fries would do and uh, especially when the weather is warming up and the snow melt is going off so I don't know 
but apparently they find a way. <clears throat> and they can only live up to around 12 years of age. So, and that's pushing it, apparently, because I think they're, the, they reach maturity from age 4 to 8 or 4 to 7, somewhere around there. Uh, but they can live up to 12 years of age. All right, so now that we know a little bit about bull trout, a little bit about lake trout, let's talk about the introduction of lake trout in Flyhead Lake. So 1905 is when they first introduced lake trout in Flyhead Lake. I can't imagine living in this area in 1905. I just, just trees, log cabins, and that is it. And then you have the entire wilderness. I mean, you got the Bob Marshall, you got Glacier National Park. Glacier Park didn't even open until 1910. So you have all this stuff to just really explore. This is really an, an outdoor paradise, uh, in my opinion, at that time. Obviously, it's a lot better with roads and stuff now. And you can get to a lot of those places a lot faster. But uh, So yeah, 1905, Lake Trout. Uh, 1914 to 1920 we introduced kokanee salmon and we got them from Oregon apparently and so we dumped salmon in the lake and then 1928 we dumped rainbow in the lake then 1933 largemouth bass brook trout in 34 perch in 34 kokanee salmon again in 1935 so they dumped a lot of salmon in this lake we're talking Mike this is just a guess and this is just undercutting it by quite a bit, I'm assuming. They've dumped probably over 10 million eggs and fish of salmon combined in Flyhead Lake. And it wasn't doing very well, apparently, because they kept dumping salmon, like lots and lots of salmon in this lake, and it wasn't thriving. But some cool things happen. I mean, when we did have salmon, you, you can talk to some of the old timers around here and they talk about how the salmon was running up the Flyhead River all the time. You can go to Glacier Park and they ran up uh, Lake McDonald, the Lake McDonald Creek as well. Uh, I guess some of the most heavily dense population of bald eagles was located in Glacier Park at one point. Apparently there was over 250 bald eagles um, down there eating the sa uh, on the salmon during the salmon run, which would have been a fascinating uh, time or fascinating scene to see eagles, bald eagles. So all that is all that's gone, gone now. Apparently there is still a salmon run up there. I haven't seen it. It'd be really cool to see if it's if it is true. <clears throat> and then they introduced bull trout in 1951. Uh, after that. And I don't know why they introduced bull trout. I assume that the population was dwindling and they just started to introduce more bull trout in the lake. Again, lots and lots of salmon. And so now we have the introduction of mysis shrimp. And this is where things kind of go haywire. Because until then, it seemed like the lake trout and all the other species of fish that they introduced were doing okay. I mean, obviously the salmon wasn't doing okay because they dumped a lot of salmon in the lake. Uh, the cutthroat, they, I don't remember seeing them introducing cutthroat back in the day. I think they do now. But all that seemed to be doing fine until the mysa shrimp was introduced. So why, why did we introduce mysa shrimp was one of my questions. Well, it turns out <clears throat> that Lake Kootenai, Lake Kootenai in British Columbia, they they introduced mysa shrimp in that lake. And the salmon there were thriving off of those mysa shrimp. They got large, uh, fishermen loved it. And so they took mysa shrimp from Waterton Lake and then introduced it into the watershed around Flyhead Lake. They actually never dumped mysa shrimp directly in Flyhead Lake but around this whole entire area. Lake uh, McGregor Lake, they dumped some in. Ashley Lake, they put some mysia shrimp. Tally Lake, they threw some in. Uh, but the, the mistakes were Whitefish Lake and Swan Lake. They dumped mysia shrimp in those two lakes in uh, yeah, 1968, and then they swam and found themselves here in, I did that right. They found themselves here in 1981. 
That's when they first found mice or shrimp in the lake. Ever since then, the population of lake trout skyrocketed. It boomed. They exploded. Lake trout were taking over basically everything. A couple things wrong with mice or shrimp with Flyhead Lake. So I have, when I mentioned Lake Kootenai, that was not dammed. And if you look at it, it looks like just a huge kind of river type of, like a reservoir, like Hungry Horse Reservoir. <clears throat> but it wasn't dammed. So there was a current in that lake, meaning that the mice of shrimp couldn't swim down because they're really weak swimmers. So they kind of just went right where the current went. And that, apparently that depth was the same where the salmon were uh, as well. So the salmon were feasting on the shrimp and getting large and everyone loved it. And so they introduced it into the lakes around here. But our lake is dammed. Flyhead Lake was dammed when they, by the time they introduced mice of shrimp here. So it turns out mice of shrimp like to travel to the very bottom of the lake. Some of the deepest parts of the lake, right where lake trout like to hang out. So lake trout were feeding off of these guys during the daytime. And there's certain stages of mice of shrimp where some of them like to swim towards the surface. Uh, I don't know what that means. I think it's around wherever zooplankton hangs out because mice of shrimp like to feed off of zooplankton. You know what else like to feed off of zooplankton? Salmon. That's the salmon's main food source, zooplankton. So now the salmon is competing for the same food source that the mice of shrimp is now eating. So during the night, mice of shrimp will go to the zooplankton, start eating it, and during the day, it will go back down. Now, salmon like to feed off the of zooplankton during dawn or dusk, so, so the mice of shrimp was never really at the same level or the same depth as the salmon were at the exact same time, so the salmon actually never even really ate the mice of shrimp. The lake trout fed off the mice of shrimp. Lake trout got massive. Lake trout now eat the salmon, eat the bull trout, eat the cut, they eat everything. They're just ferocious fish. And not only that, they took over they took over Logging Lake in Glacier National Park, they took over Bowman Lake, they took over Quartz Lake, <clears throat> and they took over Lake McDonald. Those are some of the most cleanest lakes ever, like beautiful lakes that used to hold native cutthroat, native bull trout, and now it's it's dwindling, it's getting wiped out completely. So what are they doing to combat this? Well, they've actually taken boats up in some of those mountain lakes up there in Glacier National Park and they guild netted a lot of lake trout. But they don't think that's enough. I don't know. Logging Lake um, is getting so bad where the lake trout are taken over. So they, they got some of them out of there. But apparently Logging Lake is actually getting too warm. Apparently it's getting above 60 degrees, which is mind-boggling to me. So Fish and Game actually went there, zapped some small bull trout, put them in the backpack uh, with water, and then hiked them up to Grace Lake to release them in there. So hopefully they can survive in that lake and thrive in that lake. The one big problem is the, the bull trout can't swim up to Grace Lake because there's a huge waterfall that blocks the path, but they can swim down if they wanted to. So I don't know. I hopefully, hopefully they go there and they, they stay in that lake and hopefully they do thrive because that means that is also a lake that is safe from lake trout as well. So that is how, from what I've been reading, that is how lake trout started to thrive in the population of bull trout. And that's why the kokanee salmon also dwindled. You have no kokanee salmon, no cutthroat, no bull trout. All those have died down quite a bit. I mean, they're still there. I mean, you can catch cutthroat all day long. I would really like to know where the cutthroat hang out in Flyhead Lake during the uh, winter months. That'd be kind of neat. But one place that was saved. The one place that was saved and did not get disturbed by the population of the lake trout is uh, South Fork which is awesome. The whole Bob Marshall wilderness was saved because of the dam, Hungry Horse Dam. Usually you don't think of dams saving things, but that's exactly what it did. The dam was completed uh, in 19, was it 52, 53? 
President Truman was here to flip the switch on. Uh, but yeah, no lake trout was able to get into the reservoir, and so they never actually got upstream from there. So it's really cool to have that entire area. You have the reservoir and all the Bob Marshall and the South Fork uh, River, Spotted Bear River, all that stuff. Basically just has bull trout and cutthroat trout. That's awesome. I mean, there's sucker fish and stuff like that. The reservoir it has, uh, has grayling in it as well, which is... Cool. I don't know if they'll ever take off. It's pretty rare to catch one out of uh, the reservoir anyway. <clears throat> but yeah, that is uh, what I got out of it. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. The, you know, the whole fishing scene history in Montana is pretty fascinating. I mean, I think there was a, a Bozeman open up their fisheries before Montana even became a state. And we started hiking before uh, Glacier Park was even open. We started hiking fish into all those lakes by horseback or just by backpack, just ice and eggs and started planting all these fish everywhere, which is pretty cool, pretty cool history. But uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down so I know if I should keep doing stuff like this or not. But uh, thank you guys and let, let me know if you, uh, if you have any comments on below. If you have any comments, leave them below. I'm sure I butchered something, but I'll leave a lot of the links down below as well so you can read up on it as well. So I'll see you guys next time.